Hey, what's up, everyone? All right, so I'm going to start off this watch list video for Monday, um, which would be what, March 9th? By the way, Jane, if you happen to watch this video, um, we had a time change. Our hour, we moved our clocks forward twice a year. Jane's one of our members in England. She completely botches daylight savings time. And anyway, just letting you know, Jane, if you're watching this. Um, so I have an announcement. Um, I will be working Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And then I'm going to take a long weekend. I'm taking off Thursday, Friday, Monday, and Tuesday. So those dates are March 12th, 13th, 16th, and 17th. Um, you know, attach those to the weekend, and it'll probably be my first week off. If they, they still don't really make a week off um, in years. I haven't taken a break from the screen in years, so I'm going to take a long weekend. And to be honest with you, I hate to do it because... <laughs> I feel like I need a break, but trading's been amazing. I'm going to slide this over. This is every trade I've taken in 2020, and the chat room's been on fire. I feel like it's accelerating upward here during this Corona period. So, um, but I also think just for um, my mental health, I just think I need to step away um, and just get a long weekend. So that's what I'm doing. I haven't done it in forever. Um, and that's the beauty of day trading, right? Um, I literally am taking a vacation almost against my will because I love what I do. I always say it's, uh, it's fun looking forward to Monday mornings, which I was not able to do for 23 years of a job that I hated. So I love day trading, um, but I am going to take a self-prescribed uh, long weekend. So the reason I'm saying this is I don't want people to think I died because there will not be watch those videos for those days. All right, I would, I'm just going to disappear from the face of the earth. So you're wondering where the watch list videos are. Hopefully enough people will see this that you can pass it around and let everybody know uh, when they get in chat and say, hey, where's Mike? Uh, Wayne will be in the chat room doing his thing. And I've always said this, um, Wayne is the best trader I've ever known. So it's not like I'll be missed other than um, some of you might miss my sexy voice, but that's about it. Um, so I wish you all luck uh, in my absence, but it's a little soon to say that because I'm going to be there Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So anyway, I just wanted to give a heads up on that. Um, I didn't post any results from Friday because I didn't work Friday and I have no idea. Um, I haven't spoken to Wayne or anybody. I have no idea what trades were called. I'm sure you all did great. Um, I did see um, Toka from my watch list ripped. Remember I talked I liked it over 208. I'm hoping and I, and I probably a safe bet uh, that you guys nailed that one. So, But that's the only one from my watch list that I really noticed, you know, set up and panned out. Um, I didn't really go over all the intraday charts, but all right. Anyway, let's go back to the SPY. So it looks like we had a gap down and kind of an end of day rally. It looks like uh, it was doomsday. And this happened last Friday too, by the way. The last 15 minutes, the, the market just ripped. And it looks like that happened again, really for about the last half hour. So interesting. Uh, actually broke its highs at one point right there at the end of the day. So that's interesting. Um, 295.50 is where it closed in after hours. I don't know how much weight I could give to that. But anyway, um, maybe you guys figured that out and caught that rip too, you know, because last week people don't, the market's pretty beaten up. Um, anyway, I think we're going to have bigger daily ranges for a while, um, but I think that's making for fantastic trading. And again, um, you know, I've got several stocks that are coronavirus related, or at least traders think they are, right? I don't do a lot of research on them. I just trade the crowd. Um, so let's get into the watch list. COCP um, doesn't look so great to me because every time it gaps up, it's red, right? Like the sellers are jumping all over this. But in after hours on Friday, this went up to over $1.80 and it looks like it ended the after hour session at a buck sixty-seven. So if that holds up on Monday morning in the pre-market, we have a potential gap play. So that's why that one's on watch, gap play, right? HTBX, um, crazy strong for a few days and then gapped up and then a nasty sell off on Friday. So I'd like to see it really come down to the, you know, the buy zone, but we're gonna start watching that for a bounce on Monday. AIM, um, just a recent coronavirus strong stock, right? You had a pop here, another pop here, a couple days lower on declining volume, um, down to the eight day, some support. So that one's a good candidate. Remember, I'll only take trades if they give me an A plus intraday setup. So these uh, overnight video watch lists are just places that I'm starting, you know, charts that I'm populating. And then we'll and then we'll add gappers to it in the pre-market as well. And um, I gotta pause this because my dog's getting ready to go crazy. All right, so far got away with one. Um, OPK, 
uh, had this huge move on Thursday, then a gap up on Friday and slapped back down. So it's like, it's hard to tell, like nobody's winning. Um, Bulls or Bears, it's just kind of in no man's land. But being a recent high-flying coronavirus play, it will be on intraday watch, right? For an A-plus setup. So uh, C-O-R-V, let me try to type that correctly. C-O-R-V, I actually like this chart a lot. I uh, had this spike, another spike, another spike. Um, I like it over this kind of two-day high. It's worth noting, let's see, Friday's high was 49.7. I don't, I don't generally like the sub-dollar stuff, but this is a decent setup in a, another coronavirus or perceived coronavirus play. I like it over the half. If it gets through 50 cents, which is a break of Friday's high, then you have Thursday's high, which is basically 52 cents, and then maybe we, we head up to this 60, and then you have even one more catalyst there. So you can kind of picture a trend line right here. That's why trend lines work. It's basically they're a series of lower highs, and I call those potential catalysts. I call those like dominoes that could get knocked down if this thing gets some upside momentum. So I like the setup, um, but we'll see if it gives an A-plus setup on Monday. Um, car, this is Avis, rent a car, just like Hertz, right? Um, these things have been decimated, I believe, on coronavirus because travel, right? Less travel. And so, but look, I mean, this, this uh, Avis had earnings, I think, somewhere back in here, or probably on this day, I think, and then gapped up. I mean, so, and, and I just did a brief look at earnings, and earnings were better than expected. Revenues were better than expected. And then you talk about, I mean, this thing was almost 53 bucks. You talk about off of a cliff, and it looks like it found some footing on, uh, on Friday. I'm going to pan out and kind of show you that significance of that 22 area. Look how far that it had come to get down to where's it, where's the recent low when you go left or you know the most recent low going all the way back um, you know over a year and that was right here around 22 and I'll be damned if it didn't take out 22 and then rip higher I'm gonna quickly glance at Hertz also it's pretty similar you got to go farther back but it's also well, it's actually taken out it looks I don't know what are these lows 852 pretty much the same and you could also uh, it went down to 819 this week. Uh, or last week, um, you could also, um, you know, put this one on watch because it's also down to kind of an area that's relevant on the chart and it's gotten there pretty quickly. Um, I've chosen card of these two to watch, but you could watch either one of them. Um, and a nice bounce off that 22 area. My thesis is the bounce might continue, um, especially if the market shows some strength on Monday. If the market's um, still in a coronavirus fear frenzy, um, you know, then these probably won't bounce. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll play it as the market unfolds, as we always do. Um, ALT, let me zoom in now so you can kind of get a better look at this one. Another recent coronavirus play gapped up here. Looked like it was going back down to oblivion. Next thing you know, it's kind of up fairly close to the recent highs and actually closed above its open after an initial sell-off on after the gap up on Friday. So I, I don't love that one, but I, I do want to watch it. Toka, um, yeah, I, you know, I watched this one for what? Um, I had this on watch for like three or four days in a row. Then I take a day off and it does this. So um, so now this is my FOMO pick <laughs> because I missed the breakout on Friday. I'm hoping for a follow through setup on Monday, but I you know, I certainly don't like to chase. And anytime I, I'm looking at something the day after a rip, I always feel like a chaser, but because I have intraday rules, I'm not gonna become a chaser um, and I am gonna watch this, but it certainly uh, would have been nicer to have been with you guys in chat on Friday and catch this one. Uh, but maybe we'll get a follow-through day. You know, maybe we'll get a setup. NNVC was a coronavirus ripper, then almost round trip, then it had a gap up that failed again, then another gap up that failed again. And I was, you know, pretty much written this thing off and then had a big gap up on uh, on Friday. Didn't close very strong, but this keeps it on my radar because if, if if shorts keep failing in this, right? If shorts keep, if they can't get this to come all the way back down here, um, this is kind of setting up for a face-ripping squeeze if it holds up. So I like the chart setup. Um, we'll see if it gives us a setup, right? CBLI, another coronavirus recent high flyer, um, and also kind of curling up. Reminds me of that ALT chart. Not in love with it, but we'll see. Um, and then specs look like it ripped. This is a weird chart because it had this rip and then it came all the way back down to here where everybody from this day, which by the way was um, 24 million shares, Whenever you have a spike like this and then it goes down re really quick and takes out new lows, more often than not, it won't get any footing for months. So this to me, I don't know what happened on Friday, but that's an amazing spike. I would have never expected that. Um, so I don't know what the news was. I'll look it up before Monday morning, but um, that's actually pretty impressive and held up fairly well. It's worth noting, um, 
it closed right about exactly the 200 day. I don't know how much that means or matters to you, but we'll see. I'm going to keep specs on watch for a couple days and see if we get a setup. All right, so that's the entirety of my list. Um, I'll just leave it at that. I'm going to quit babbling, and we'll see you in chat on Monday morning.